Okay, hello Cleveland Opera Theater. I hope I've gotten this running. Uh, I'm trying a new way to stream today. So my name is Megan Thompson. I'm the, ex uh, the Director of Education and Outreach for Cleveland Opera Theater. And uh, today, to continue our Verdi Month, I want to talk about um, Verdi's La Traviata and its influence on some popular culture, specifically uh, its impact on the movie Pretty Woman. So um, I will warn you that today is going to be full of spoilers for both the opera as well as the movie. So if that bothers you, um, this is your chance to, to run while you still can. Uh, but unlike very uh, other art forms, we do believe that spoilers enhance your enjoyment of opera. And so we do like to share some different secrets and uh, nice little factoids um, with you before you enjoy an opera. So let's dive on in here. So La Traviata and Pretty Woman are actually very parallel. So La Traviata, you know, we're looking at artwork that was written, the original story was written in the 1840s. So it's kind of interesting that something can still be so relevant, you know, years later. Now, granted, Pretty Woman's 30 years old now, but still, um, that's still, you know, our lifetime, our, our contemporary period here. So La Traviata's plot um, is a really nice, easy one to follow. It's a really great opera for beginners for that reason. You know, boy meets girl, they fall in love. Uh, father's like, whoa, what are you doing? You can't be hanging out with a courtesan, AKA a prostitute. You guys have to break up, um, tells her to go away. They end up getting back together. And then um, sadly, because Verdi was a bit melodramatic at times with his endings, uh, she, they did not live happily ever after. She did actually pass away at the end of the opera from opera's favorite disease, tuberculosis. Um, so it's a very simple, nice, easy plot to follow. Now, the reason why Pretty Woman really parallels this and why that we draw these two together is that they're very much the same plot. So both the opera as well as the movie feature um, a prostitute or a courtesan. Oh, and I should also mention, by the way, if you're watching with family or if you have younger viewers, um, Pretty Woman is rated R for strong language, sensuality, and brief drug use. So, you know, just be aware of that. Um, if any of that bothers you, this is also probably not a good one to be watching with the family. But if you are open to watching an R-rated movie, it is an excellent rom romantic comedy from 1990. So, we have a prostitute on stage. Now, for Pretty Woman, written in 1990, this isn't so earth shattering and crazy. Um, this is something that we talk about pretty regularly now in our society. Even if it's still a taboo subject, it's not, um, it's not something we shy away from necessarily in terms of our media and our entertainment. But in its time, Verity was really going against social norms and challenging them by not just having a prostitute on stage, a courtesan on stage, but specifically by having her be the, the female lead who, with whom we're supposed to feel some empathy, toward whom we're supposed to be very empathetic. Um, that's, that's a lot to ask an audience in the 1850s to be, to be uh, cheering on this courtesan, cheering on Violetta. So we have Violetta in the opera. In the movie, we've got Vivian. So Violetta is like top notch courtesan. You might not even catch that that's what her profession is when you're watching the opera, depending on the production. Um, she's really hanging out with all the wealthy guys. You know, courtesans were, were usually with, you know, politicians and high ranking officials. So, you know, she's making it well for herself. In the movie, it was slightly different. Uh, Julia Roberts' character, Vivian, was kind of the cheapest of the cheap of, you know, as far as prostitutes go, made very evident by the way her hair and clothes and makeup were done up. Um, but both the movie and the opera, these women come into contact with gentlemen. Um, so in the opera, we have Alfredo, who ends up uh, meeting, meeting Violetta and just falling for her love at first sight kind of thing. Um, but in the movie, we have Richard Gere's character, Edward Lewis, who decides he needs an escort for a few functions, who finds, finds Julia Roberts and decides, you know, he can, he can get this girl to, to look appropriate for him. So these relationships develop in very different ways between the opera and the movie. Um, but 
the idea being that in both these women are coming from backgrounds that is really are really frowned upon but they end up with these gentlemen who are from more respectful backgrounds who can see past the surface with these ladies so um the one one big difference is in la traviata i mentioned you know alfredo's father was not a fan of having alfredo tied up with a courtesan so he sent her away um, in the movie, we don't have a specific father figure, but we do have the public pressure fulfilling this role, kind of um, shadowing over their relationship. We have the hotels, um, like concierge, who was very, very much against her being in this hotel with him. Um, and then later on, there are a few other instances with other characters in the movie that make it very clear that Vivian is um, perceived as a bit much lower class and she's she's not as welcome with Richard Gere's character. So now through these two stories, we we see the development of the relationships, we go through them. The big single biggest difference is that obviously Verity, we had a very sad ending, very tragic ending. But in the movie, um, because it's a romantic comedy, not a romantic tragedy, Vivian is swept away by Richard Gere's character, Edward. Um, totally sees this promise of this new life of luxury and bliss. And she sees that she's appreciated by him. And while Verity could have could have gone this route, he didn't. Um, but the, our movie producers decided to give them a happy ending uh, and allows them to be together, assuring us that love can endure, endure these hardships and can actually last. So having them come together is really special and it's also really cool how the movie did this um, because they brought Edward and Vivian together at the very end in her apartment which was really showing the class difference between the two of them because it was pretty uh, decrepit kind of run down um, so it's really showing how different their social status is. Now what's super cool in Pretty Woman is yes the plot is obviously very much based on this opera but what's really neat is they actually go and attend the opera so Edward takes Vivian to the opera in San Francisco to see La Traviata uh, like on stage. And she's very much moved by the opera. She really sees, she feels the pertinent themes of the courtesan falling in love with one of her suitors. She just really connects with this. So uh, actually the reason I tried a different broadcasting thing today is because I want to see if I can also share a clip from the opera. So bear with me for a second here. Oh, let's see if I'm doing this properly. It looks like it. I hope so. Hopefully you're going to see what I'm seeing. So we're late. No, it's all right. Opening night never starts on time. Okay. <laughs> Program, sir. Thank you. Fun fact, that is not actually the San Francisco, it's just San Francisco Opera's uh, entryway. I'll explain it after we see this. Right this way, Sir, Hey, come here, you gotta look at this. It's all right, I've already seen it. If you're afraid of heights, why do you get seats up here? Because they're the best. Is there anything else, sir? No. The glasses are there, enjoy the opera. Oh. So, you said this is in Italian. Mm -hmm. So how am I gonna know what they're saying? These are broken. Mine are broken. That's oh, okay, too. Believe me, you'll understand. The music is very powerful. The band. Both reactions to opera, the first time I see it, is very dramatic. Either love it or they hate it. If they love it, they will always love it. If they don't, they may learn to appreciate it, but it will never become part of their soul.
She liked it better than Pirates of Penzance. Oh. And on that note, we will go ahead and end there. Thank you for indulging me in a rather long clip, but that is one of my favorite uses of opera in popular culture. Um, so I did mention when we were going into that clip that that actually was not the San Francisco Opera House. Uh, and I said I would tell you a little bit afterward. So fun fact, they had planned to film on site at the San Francisco Opera, but unfortunately, um, this was right at the time of the earthquake uh, of 1989, it happened on October 17th, and they were unable to utilize the Opera House because of that earthquake. So instead, that opening was actually filmed at the Museum of Natural History in Los Angeles. And then the whole scene was all um, faked on a very small set at Disney designed by Albert Brenner. So the more you know, I always love those little tidbits. So she really, she being Julia Roberts' character, Vivian, really connects with Violetta on stage. She really sees the parallels of how this courtesan falls in love with, you know, someone who's in a, a higher class and really could, could live her life. And then she's brought to tears by Violetta's demise at the end of the opera. Um, so she's faced by a hard decision herself by the end of the movie, Pretty Woman. So in Pretty Woman's final scene, Edward does come back to Vivian's apartment. He is, he's there to, you know, to try to woo her to him. He, he wants her to leave her life and come with him and be with him and, you know, live happily ever after, as they say. And so when he arrives, we actually hear a reprise of the aria Armami Alfredo from La Traviata. And uh, she does indeed decide to leave her life of prostitution in order to stay with Edward and to live a different life with him. So um, if you have not watched the entirety of La Traviata or the entirety of Pretty Woman, I highly recommend both, um, especially if you watch them back to back so you can see all of these parallels that we've been discussing this, this afternoon. And otherwise, I encourage you to continue tuning in to Cleveland Opera Theater's Opera 101. The whole month of June, we are dedicating to Verity. So every day there'll be some slight different topics, something to do with Verity on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And then Wednesdays, we will continue our page to stage series in which we have a variety of different special guests coming to uh, visit us and share information. Wednesday's session will actually be focusing on a brand new opera, uh, I can't breathe. So definitely tune in. And then Fridays at 12.15 is Maestro's Corner, again, where Maestro Domenico Boyajan is joined by special guests every week. So definitely continue to follow us. If you have not already joined our mailing list, please visit clevelandoperatheater.org to do so. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and pretty much every other social media feed you can find. We're on all of them. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>